Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. The last couple of weeks or maybe even months I've been traveling a lot and during the very long uh, transatlantic flights I've been spending a lot of time in programming in uh, Conway's Game of Life. Uh, of course you've probably heard uh, about Conway's Game of Life for many many years now. Uh, Conway of course is a British mathematician who died of COVID just a couple of years ago and uh, Game of Life is a zero player game meaning that there's no player but um, there is a lot of fun to be had anyway with this game because it's a game uh, it's a color it's called a seller automata game where um, you can actually learn a lot by uh, placing the cells in a certain way. Now, um, Game of Life is extremely interesting because um, it's actually a Turing complete machine or programming language, meaning that you can actually program in Game of Life. And that's, as I said at the beginning, that's exactly what I've been doing. I'm being, I've been actually trying to implement as many uh, system S360 mainframe uh, instructions as possible uh, in Game of Life. So basically an emulator for the S360 in Game of Life. It's far, far from being anything that I can show in this channel at this point. Um, eventually I hope to be able to do it. But, um, so, but I realized that actually we don't even have a Game of Life game on our mainframe right now. I did write a while ago an implementation in Assembler and uh, so I thought uh, it would be a good introduction to the topic uh, and maybe even a contribution to uh, to our uh, TK5 and maybe even TK4 uh, mainframe operating system distribution of MVS if I wrote a game of life in Rex. It's quite easy to do in Rex um, and, um, and the terminal handling is uh, almost a given in Rex whereas if you do it in Assembler you have to do a lot more and which I did. I have it working but uh, it can be improved a lot the Assembler version. However today I thought we could sit together and do a little bit of recreational programming and write a simple uh, implementation of uh, Conway's Game of Life in Brex, which is the Rex implementation for MVS 3.8 in TK4 and in TK5 by my very good friends Peter Jacobs from Germany and Mike Grossman, both uh, excellent uh, developers, great people and good good friends of mine that met them many times over the last few years. Um, now just for the uninitiated, I don't know if there's many uninitiated to the game of life, but it's a very simple game. You have an infinite two-dimensional orthogonal grid of squares, it says here, so basically a map that's two-dimensional and expands into infinity. And each cell, um, imagine like a go board where you focus on the squares, not on the intersection of the squares. And, uh, and each one of those squares can be either be live or dead. Or you can also think populated or unpopulated, it says here in the wiki page. There is only very simple rules. Each cell really responds to what's around itself. So any, um, and, and so then you have discrete steps that you go through the game, uh, generations if you want. And at each generation, you uh, the you know the, the the game analyzes what's around each cell, and then decides what will happen to it in the next generation. So if any cell or any square is populated or alive, with fewer than two live neighbors, then um, uh, then it will die in the next generation. That's number one rule. Number two rule: any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. So it need, if it has two or three, it will continue to live. If it has less than two, it will die. Number three, any life cell with more than three live neighbors dies because of overpopulation. So it wants two or three to continue to live, three 
or more uh, more than three so four or more it will die any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell again so if it's exactly three that's the fourth rule it will uh, those cells will reproduce and then you that that square or cell will become um, will become uh, populated again or alive again very simple rule and so uh, there's not a whole lot of computation, very simple to do in Rex, I think. Um, I've, as I said, I've done it so far in Go, I've, I've done it in Assembler. I think I remember I did many, many years ago a version in PL1. Um, so, um, and so if we start by having the game, maybe I can have a mini series here. And in the future, uh, install, a, install of this series, um, I can maybe then do programming in uh, in uh, Conway's Game of Life, which is kind of the next abstraction. But for today, what we want to do is program the game in Rex or Brex on TK5. Before we go there, I just want to have a quick uh, um, commercial break for the sponsor of this episode, which is asbomb.sh. Uh, as bomb message is a free website where you go and you create your s bombs for your software for your repositories and then you can share it either with your users of your software because now more and more uh, users of software demand to have an s bomb as introduced by president biden's uh, executive order a few years ago it's now required whenever you deal with the federal government and so sharing of s bombs has become an activity that comes up more and more often so here you have s bomb sh it's just a uh, it's this website and you can go in there and you can say let's say that uh, that you have a repository called imdb then you would just press here get an s bomb and now s bomb does that sh does several things you will go get the repository create a, a software bill of materials which is what s bomb means and also do a vulnerability scan of all those components so in this uh, repository imudb which is an immutable database there's 412 components you will run the latest uh, vulnerability scan of those components and then give you a risk score um, so it will tell you exactly what the quality is, the quality score is, um, the vulnerabilities that you have, and of course the, the, old, the full uh, software bill of materials which you can share with others. You can share it either by email um, or you can download it or you can get unique URL which you can post somewhere on your website. So I use it a lot. Lots of people use it. Over a hundred thousand uh, repositories, uh, open source repositories, are uh, shared uh, weekly, or I don't know, but uh, very often with uh, sbomb.sh. And uh, I encourage you to start getting into a, a secure software supply chain by starting to use software bill of materials as bombs and share them with the users of your software so that they can themselves run vulnerability scans and see how secure the software is it creates a safer world all right i'm connected here to a tk5 installations and a fresh installation on uh, my computer here and um, so this is a version installation so i'll just log in as herc01 um, And the password is see you later, obviously. Okay, so we're logged in here into TK5 update 2. Doesn't really matter. We're not going to use any very advanced features of Brex, uh, the Rex installation that's on TK5. We're going to use fairly normal stuff. Um, so I know that somewhere here we have it breaks samples. I think that's where I'm going to put it here. Yeah. So in this directory, where there's already a couple of programs that are part of the Brex distribution that I contributed. I don't. Let's see if we can find one. I think this is by me. Yeah. So, and this is by me. And I think even the, no, this is not by me. This is by Mr. Spock, uh, the 
maintainer of the Discord channel where you'll find hundreds or thousands of like-minded mainframe enthusiasts. So I think I'm going to put it in here. So I'm going to say start live. Oh. Oh, let's go there again. So this is the place where it is. Um, so let's go there. And let's call it life. Life, as they say in Australia. Oh, it's not in catalog. That's weird. Rex V2 R5M2 samples life. Okay, here we are. All humble beginnings start with a with a uh, rem remark. Uh, Conway's game of life for Rex. Okay, we're gonna say. Already in the meantime, then I like to have blank lines, so let's create like 50 of those. All right, so let's start with very humble uh, setup here. Let's make our rows be uh, like 20 rows, and then columns, uh, 40 columns. And let's first, let's let it run generations equals uh, just five generations. So if we have a loop or something funny, it's not going to run for too long. Uh, so now, initialize the board with random data. So we want to go, so we want two nested loops, obviously, two rows, and then do column, call equals one to columns, because that's what we have above, checks out, and then we just say world row call equal, I just hope this will work either on or off. And end. Uh, so let's, I want to write this so that we can test this as quickly as possible without having to write all the rules first. So um, There's some philosophy in this comment, but uh, okay, and then call. So, since we're going to have to display the world very often let's write a function for that uh, okay and then we can do an exit here and then we can do here display world um, let's see here what, how we want to do this um, but should be fairly simple. Uh, do row equals basically the same thing again. Do rows. So, oh, line, not life. And then we do. 
to call equal one to columns if world what is it called okay let's take this one so we don't make mistakes oh that was wrong hmm, my cut and paste doesn't work I don't understand Windows anymore. So if it's on, then let's say line equals line and combined with, um, let's use maybe this sign to show it's alive. And we have already have a speller here. Otherwise, or else, line equals line, and then it's empty. Let's do this the same everywhere. Okay. And of course, we need to end this if. And now we just simply we're inside the loop still so we can just say hmm, say line and and return i think this on its own should already work. So let's copy the whole argument here. And let's see if this works. So we go out, we go to the TSO command line and we say Rex. <coughs> oh, there's something wrong in line 26. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, what happened here? Why is this? Let's say at least five. Not enough. Okay, this looks better. We still need one. Nope, that was too much. Hmm. <laughs> well, what we can do is just cancel. And then we start again from scratch and we say seven. Okay, so uh, what was wrong to row equals one to rows? Oh, I got it. Okay, so let's go here. Let me say, okay, so that worked. Now we have a Let's see if it's really random. I wasn't too sure about the random fun function. And let's look at the beginning if it's different each time. Yeah, so that seems to have worked. Good. Now let's do the rules. Um, So we can put this down, the function works, so we don't need to look at that anymore. And what we want to do at this point is um, uh, display, OK, 
Okay, so we remove this, and now we we need the function here next. Well, let me think for a while. So. Okay, let's look through the generations that we defined up here. Generations equals five. So we say do gen equals one to generations. And then we say create a space. Do that again. And then um, call how to name functions. That's the biggest problem in programming generation then after we did that we say call these display world and then that ends the loop and then we can exit. Okay. So what we do, do need now is the rules. Next generation. So what we want to do is we want to have two arrays for the map and then we perform the function on each on one and when we're done we copy to the next one. Uh, Rex unfortunately does not have pointers and the Rex that we have here so we cannot just swap uh, first one map and then the other. Unfortunately we could do something with marking which map we're using and then just swap back and forth but then we probably need two different display display world implementations one for each map but it would be significantly faster because then we would have to we wouldn't have to copy one map the work working map to the display map but let's first do it with the copying and then we'll see how terrible the performance is and then we can always fix it later so um, do row equals one to rows. Do call equals one to calls. Okay, so now we need to have something that counts the neighbors for each cell. Neighbors equals count neighbors row and cell because we want to tell it where we are that's the argument we pass um, and now we apply the rules and we say if world row column equals one then do if, it, if it's alive then we say um, let me think if the if the cell is alive then we need to now uh, if neighbors this function just counts how many neighbors there are it's a very simple one uh, it's less than two and neighbors is greater than three if it's less than so if neighbors less than two let's look at the rules again um, less than two then it dies if it's more than three then it dies so i think that's correct so if neighbors left fewer than you two neighbors or or more than three then the cell um, well we call it 
temp row. That's the temporary map, which we'll have to copy them into the um, display map. Then we set it as dead. Then else, if it's not fewer than two or more than three, then by definition, temp row call equals one, then it's alive. Uh, that ends this if. But then we still have this if here. If it's alive, this applies if it's alive. So if it's not alive, if it's dead, let me just fix this. If it's dead, uh, else do if neighbors equals three, then if it's exactly three, then it will reproduce, as if you remember from, then we say temp row call equals one, then we turn it alive for the next generation because of this rule here. Uh, where is it? With exactly three neighbors, yeah, so here it is. Um, then equals one. If it's not exactly, then we say else temp row column stays dead. And um, then an end for this one. And an end for the do, I guess. Yeah. Let me check the. This ends this if. This one else two. So this one ends. Okay. Then this one. Let me check here. Nope. Okay. This is how comfortable programming was in the 80s on terminals because when I was programming I didn't have colors of my terminal just green and then intensive highlight or not uh, this is already like two orders of magnitude better than what we had back then so now when we finish this we need to copy so copy temp map to display map and we do do row equals one two rows one problem with with rex that i have is that it's all global variables or uh, all external variables it's really difficult to uh, do some real coding like this but for small projects it's fine okay so then we have to say what is it called? World. Okay, so world row column equals temp row column and end. So this should just copy um, the the whole map. And now we need a function. All right, copy, do row. Oh, I know what's missing. Return. Okay. So um, now we want to have the count neighbors. Count neighbors, I think we called it. Let me check. 
count neighbors here. Okay. Count neighbors. Count neighbors per cell. And then we say parse arg. I think we gave it row and column. Let me check here. Row. There's something wrong here. Uh, let me check because this doesn't make too much sense. Cell. This should say column. You probably noticed it. I didn't. Um, so. Okay. So we need to parse arguments with row. And column that makes sense now. Do mm, for minus, let me think now. So one below to one above. Uh, do a direct column. So this is for the row. If it's one row above, and then two uh, minus one to one, and then we say if row equals zero and column equals zero, then skip. So I uh, I think it's iterate in Rex. I very rarely use this, but uh, then number rows equals row plus uh, then will be the same for columns, column plus D, C, yeah. And so then we would say here if. Let me think here. Uh, thinking of a go board here, it's the easiest way. Is greater than zero and So the end of the so there will be rows because that's the end of the map and column equals zero and fewer columns, than columns is it with an S? I think it is because that's how we wrote it here and that. Well, we didn't check that one. Let me check. Yeah, it's calls. Then, so let me think about this. So if greater than zero and fewer equals to rows and column greater than zero and is it yeah, we're not out of the map. Okay, that's fine. Then neighbors equals neighbors world right. Because uh, we have it here, row plus. think so. Um, and then we should return neighbors. Let's save before everything crashes. Um, not too sure. Let me count neighbors. 
being passed the row and the column inside that loop. Now we go from one below, one above, one left, one right, zero and column equals zero, then yeah, then that's fine when we can skip. Because then there is no direct. Otherwise, or else, the row plus, yeah, makes sense, and then n column, and then we count here if there's a end at our rows. I think that should work. I don't know. Um, well, there's only one way to know. Run it and see if it crashes. Okay, so there's an error. Neighbors 73. Bad arithmetic. Okay, let's check what's going on. 73. Why wouldn't that work? Two minus one to one columns equals zero, then I iterate out and else equals row plus the R and see equals seventy three and then here is the problem. If that is greater than zero Yeah, so we're checking for out of bounds. Hmm. Then neighbors equals why would that not work? And, and okay, I think it's a formatting issue. So, Quite sure this makes sense. And and bad arithmetic conversion. Neighbors, okay. Um, let's remove that. And I believe the problem is this thing here itself. So 
um, what I want to do is oh I think I got I, I know what's wrong okay so we didn't initialize it as a number variable and obviously that wouldn't make sense um, let's start with a smaller map because there's quite a few iterations here if you think about it will go through 1 to 40 but then inside there it calls count neighbor and there again there is the same counting and also that's kind of the limit of not having pointers in a language makes things a lot more difficult and less elegant anyway so let's see if that works because not only we iterate within an iteration and then within that we call an iteration again double so it's 40 times 40 times 40 times 40 but also we copy then the whole map so let's see if this works yeah that's actually quite fast so as you can see you can see here the cpu getting busy uh, in this window um, all right, so that worked. Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger now. And we do 10 iteration, and let's make this a little bit nicer also. Okay, so. Okay, you can see here. the system getting busy that's fine so we now have a game of life Turing machine and that worked I wonder if we if this very same program would also work on uh, IBM's Rex for VM uh, we could give this a try and I'm not sure about the random function, but uh, maybe we'll do this in a later episode. Oops, sorry. Uh, for now, this seems to work just fine. 70 MIPS, 69 MIPS. It uses a lot of resources, but it's working. So uh, the next step will be to start programming in Conway's Game of Life. And... Um, or maybe start, maybe before we do that, in the next uh, installment of this uh, mini-series, we could actually program some patterns and see how they evolve. There's some very interesting things where uh, you can have endless patterns. They, they change, mutate, and always repeat. Others travel. Uh, there is boats. There is, um, there is all kinds of stuff. Very interesting. I mean, it's fascinating. Uh, but for now we got it working uh, we could probably be represented much nicer with real squares we could work on that but for now we have the game of life uh, working fine and Okay, I will be updating this and uploading it to the to my repository so that um, you folks can play with it and hopefully then I will also send it to uh, Mike Grossman and Peter Jacob uh, in Germany maybe they will include it as part of the um, as part of the uh, their normal Brex distribution. One thing which I just realized it's missing is we don't number the um, the generations. So we should certainly do that. Um, where will we put this run through? Display world, next check all next generation. Oh, I know what's wrong here next generation so it's actually not even complete 
uh, run through the oh here it is so actually we have it um, but what we need to say is Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, much better. We want the underlining to go, of course, under the number, but this is already much better. So. say This looks already better, a bit more user-friendly. Oh, something wrong. <laughs> I know what's wrong. Okay. That's the thing about scripts, they continue to run. All right, so... This is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Okay. Oh, there's one more. <laughs> Row thir uh, line 13. Okay. Here it is. Say, not sow. Which actually in German means pig. Uh, or the female pig, the female pig is called sow in German. All right, so I think we got this more or less late. One more. Um, one more trial. Yeah, 20 and 30 here, okay. And that works fine. I will be uploading this to my repository and put the link in the description below this video. I hope you had fun playing with uh, Conway's Game of Life. First installment, second will maybe we'll do some patterns. And then in the third one, we'll start to do some programming. As I'm saying, I've been doing some... I wrote an implementation in Go and then started to actually emulate some S360 instructions on top of uh, Game of Life. A lot of fun during long flights. Um, I'll, we'll be getting there eventually. Thank you very much for watching.